Oh, by the way, your process pistons is now what we're calling them. If you missed yesterday's show, odyssey.com, rewind, or check out the show's YouTube page. Congrats. You've got exactly five more wins than the Sam Hinkie process Sixers, who were attempting to lose. You're in year four of a rebuild. 17-point underdogs tonight against the T-Wolves. It's not even real life. But that's not what we're talking about. We'll get to the Lions at three. Kenny, take a text, and I go straight to the phones. All of these gambling scandal stories swirling in the air. Has it begun to change the way you at least watch sports? That you at least in your mind wonder about the authenticity of what you're watching. When you see that play or that ending or something and you're like, wait, it used to just be weird. But now you're wondering, does somebody just make a lot of money off of this? Try hard guy at the end of the game. Can it's the three. For skeptics that felt like this for years about sports being fixed, this gives them a leg to stand on. It most certainly all WWF feel now. That's from Marcus in the truck. All right. Anyone who didn't see this coming due to legalized sports betting is either stupid or lives under rainbows and roses. That's from Paul from Shelby. Paul, appreciate you, brother, and that's why I'm bringing it up. I don't think it's appropriate for us to just, look, you get to a point, the Jante Porter thing, do I believe that's tip of the iceberg? Yeah, I do. You know, load management in the NBA, Boy, there's no easier way to manipulate than knowing when a guy is, well, you know, I'm a little tired tonight. What what are coaches going to say? And, and probably thought, nobody's going to recognize me of all people. This I'm Jante Porter. Porter. Except for, you know, tens of thousands of dollars placed on you. Like, yeah, you didn't even try. Like, you didn't go out there and score six points and roll an ankle. No, he had a illness. Right. He had Juan Gonzalez's flu-like symptoms. Yeah. Kenny. I'm not sure if games are rigged, but can we all admit right now that it's at least a little bit suspect? I That's where I'm at, is that it's okay to be a little bit of a skeptic, a little bit of a cynic. When I've seen Alabama's baseball coach, when I've seen Temple basketball, when you saw the Michigan point spread stuff that we talked about, that the cheating coincided with one of the great against the, the number runs in the history of college football, when you have Jante Porter, when you have the Otani thing. Yeah, and, and yes, do I think it's problematic for ESPN, a broadcast company, to own a sports book and then broadcast games? Yes, there's a difference between taking a sports book as an advertiser and then being the book. It feels like that B-dubs commercial from back in the day where they'd hit the button and the ref would trip somebody on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> hit the button, send it to overtime. <laughs> And overtime it is. All right, let's get to the callers. Dorian's going to lead it off today, 97-1. Dorian, what's going on, buddy? What's going on, Mike? Hey, man, I I hate to say this. I feel it's all sus. All of them are, I'm not going to say all of the players, because you've had scandals in the NBA. You've seen the Pete Rose situation. You've seen the NFL, how they had to suspend players. This was a bad, bad idea from the game, and it is ruin integrity of, of all sports. It's all about money now. It's all about money, and you really kind of, especially, no one's really watching the deal at the NBA. No one's really watching what these guys are doing. Are they gambling? Hello? Listening yeah. to you, Dorian. Didn't want to stop you. Oh, oh, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just of the adage that, yeah, that it's compromise, and I feel like whenever I'm watching games, even look, even them lousy pissing games. Like, dude, if some if the refs aren't spilling it from you, or calling games, I mean, or or calling, you know, fouls or or just missing totally stuff, it's just is the refs in it? Who's who's behind all of the draft keys? Who's behind all of this? Yeah, it's got to be the players too. They all have to be benefiting some kind of way. Yeah, and especially just, during just, like with especially in the NBA and the low management. It's why I don't place anything on prop bets because you don't know who's going to play. Why do you think on cash the ticket I do not do NBA bets? Because GTD. Do you know what GTD means? No. Game time decision. Oh, every mm -hmm. damn player on every damn team is GTD. How would I ever hand out a pick at 10 in the morning for a game at 7 at night and I don't know who's playing and who's not? Mm -hmm. If you have the information and you have it early enough and you know who's going to play or not, See, that's it. Right. Everyone thinks manipulation is Bob going out there and going 0 for 30 from the field and dribbling the ball off his sack. Right. No, that's movie stuff. Right. The information alone can be powerful enough. 
Right. If you know that this player who normally is the eighth or ninth man on the bench is going to get a lot of run and his over under is four and a half points, put the over because he's going to be asked to score a lot. Tonight. And I think that's what the Jante Porter case will center around. It really does come down to information. He's a nobody player, mm -hmm. and yet he's the most popular prop of the night. The right people got the right information and thought they had an angle, and they're slamming under his total. Mm -hmm. And mysteriously, he pulls himself out of the game right, after three a, minutes with an illness? Right. Like you didn't even fake a rolled ankle like you landed wrong getting a rebound, which you could at least justify. And I, Coach, it really hurts. I can't play. I'm sick. I'm done. I'm out. But I, this counts, right? It counts that I played? Okay, good. I'm out. So, again, it makes you wonder. None of us can prove it. But how many investigations will it take? You know, how many more scandals is it going to take before it does begin to affect the way all of us, including our listeners, watch games? Mm -hmm. It makes you at least ask the question. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm as guilty of that watching some of the tournament games. I was just like... This isn't real. I, I'd bring up this one player, real. but it'd be very unfair. Right, but it, it was. But he so played like Jonah ha Jonah Hill choking on that piece of ham in Wolf of Wall Street. Right. <laughs> like, what is going on? Go to Connor. 97.1. What's up, Connor? Hey there, Mike. Um, So I, I've been under the belief that things are starting to get rigged. Um. And I believe there are some shady things that happened in the NFC Championship game, and I have two points that I'd like to talk sure. about. About so on the Jameer Gibbs broken play fumble, it could just be because he was a rookie, sure. But if you watch that play, Goff opens left, the line crashes down left, Gibbs goes to the right. And I guess they do a lot of cutback counter plays, you know, but that's play number one. Play number two. Brandon Ayuk went with his famous catch off Jerry Jacobs' forehead. Vildor. Before he caught that ball, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a flag thrown. Yes. And that flag was never discussed by the commenters. It was just picked up. Nobody ever talked about it. And Brandon Ayuk got a catch. Well, I, I think what that was going to be uh, is that was going to be a penalty on Vildor. Yeah. So I understand the comedy in the whole off-the-face mask, wow, he's terrible. The reality is I think there was a defensive PI or a holding on that play, and they just said, all right, well, they made the catch. We'll just put the yeah. flag away. You're right. Should have been explained. I can't go there with you on the Gibbs thing, and I want to explain why. I'm not laughing at you. I'm saying loud environment, on the road, he is a rookie. Miscommunications happen. That, yeah. And, and yeah, you're in the close to the end zone. Look what happened a couple of years ago, right? Michigan puts in J.J. McCarthy, an inexperienced player at the time. Late in the game, Spartan Stadium, the place is going nuts, the 21 game. Yeah. What happens? Bad exchange. Yep. I'm not accusing anybody of anything. It's a different quarterback with a different mesh point and a bad result. Yep. Bleep happens. I, I, I don't want to go there and start re-adjudicating like individual things. It's about your mindset. So, Connor, you answered my question. Because you're in your mind thinking these things aren't something. on the level. Yeah, Gibbs is the, like, hey, he's just great rookie, and why did he make this mistake at this point? But I will say for that one, it's it, it goes back to Jonte Porter. If you could at least make me kind of believe, okay, you went up for a rebound and rolled your ankle, I'll let that go. For Gibbs, yeah, you were down near the end zone, so the crowd is louder down there. You may have heard something wrong. You went the wrong way. You fumbled the ball. That I'm okay with. But there are times where you're just like, what? Really? Okay.